praise the Lord. And, and this, anybody that's been to a wrestling match knows that this is how it looks. To me, it's ugly. You're grabbing some old sweaty body. But just not exciting. And you're slipping and sliding over their sweat and your sweat. And in most sports, really, in most sports, there are timeouts. They're not timeouts for the wrestlers. Once they get out there on the mat, it's go. Until one gives up, or one has a death hold on the opponent. In wrestling, if you let your guard down for even a minute, your opponent will pin you to the floor. And the reason Paul uses that word wrestle is because wrestling, there are no timeouts. In basketball, there's a timeout. In football, there's a timeout. In most sports, there's a timeout. Even in tennis, you get a timeout. But in wrestling, it's bang! You're into it, baby, and somebody's going to win, somebody's going to lose. And the minute that you relax, your opponent comes on you, and you're down on the mat, it's all over. That's right. That's right. Now, you can't say, time out, devil, I need a breather. Isn't that hard? That's, that, but that's the truth. You can't say that. Because those are the moments he's waiting for. Or you can't say, well, devil, I'm really tired. I, I, I just got to get away from this battle for a while. You got to be careful about that. Because there are no timeouts. It's very clear. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual hosts. And all of these spiritual things that we can't even see. The enemy has no symp sympathy. He has and takes no excuses. He is a good listener. He's a master at that. Because when you say, oh, I'm tired of fighting the devil, he wants to hear that. And he's thinking, now, this is the time for the kill. This is what I've been waiting for. Amen. When you talk to people about spiritual warfare, they just really don't want to get into it. They don't want to talk about it. They don't want to think about it. But they've got 72,000 reasons they're having problems. And this is the reason they're having problems. Because there's a spiritual force out there that's against you. It, it don't like you. I like you, but it doesn't like you. And he uses all different ways to put wedges in and to get in there and to change things in your life and destroy things in your life. That's his goal. He has no sympathy. He takes no excuses. He is the original kick them while they're down guy. You feel down? Man, he'll make you feel down all right. He'll beat you down. He'll walk on you. He'll walk on your face while you're down. He ain't going to lift you up. It's so interesting when, when people many times get discouraged, they'll pull back from church. The one place that we're trying to be an encourager. And they just kind of disappear in the sunset. I called five people yesterday and asked them where they'd been. They said, gee, I haven't seen you for a long time. They said, well, we'll be there tomorrow, Pastor. We've really been down in the dumps. Duh! Duh. Come on! 24-7! He doesn't stop! He's trying to get you! He doesn't want to let you go. There are no warm-up times. There are no pra practice baskets. There are no Geneva Convention rules. He is the dirtiest player on the planet. He knows all the tricks. Amen. Mm -hmm. wow. They're fighting a real battle against us. And he loves some people who say, there is no devil. There is no demon. I don't believe in that stuff. I believe that was in the past. Well, you need to go into the insane asylum and talk to people about that. I'm sure they'd be glad to understand that real quick. You need to go down to Harborview here in our city and go up on the eighth floor and let me talk to me about no demons. I've been there. And not as a patient. <laughs> I've been there to visit some of you. <laughs> we need to learn the three R's of spiritual warfare. And not leave here today. Oh, I'm going to get eaten alive. You will get eaten alive if you're not listening to what I'm talking to you about. Number one, we need to recognize principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wholesale witnesses. And the other day in the Mayo Clinic, I, I, they have a letter that goes out every month, and I, 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 I subscribe to it because I like to hear about all these different diseases they're finding. And they use the word multitude. They use the word multitude. 
in, the, in, the, in this particular letter. There's a multitude of diseases that are being discovered. Now, what is the Bible, just, what are we just talking about? We're talking about hosts of wickedness in high places. What do you think those hosts are doing? Bringing down to you little candy canes and putting them on your door? I don't think so. There are more sicknesses today than they've ever known. And they're trying to discover ways, thank God, of how to overcome them. But there's a, there's a host of sicknesses. And I look today... And I look at the Goliath that's facing the church today. I believe that Goliath is cancer. I believe that with all my heart. You read through the obituaries and you see the people that have died with cancer. I believe there are people today, and I want to be one of them, that breaks through and finds relief for the people of our land and our country and our different countries that we go to to set them free from that dastardly thing called cancer. Amen. It's, like, it's like some people are so, oh, I've got cancer. Oh, I've got cancer. It's like it's some holy thing that has happened to them. Like some mark of distinction. No, it's the enemy and he's brought that into your life and he's put it into your life because he wants to kill you. He doesn't want to bless you. Every good gift comes from where? The devil? I don't think so. It comes from God. Number one, we need to recognize we are in a war and truth is our victory. That's why I'm talking, talking to you today just as straight as I possibly can. To you on the internet today, I'm talking to you just as straight as I can. There's people on the internet that is listening to me. And you've bound, been bound with things for years. You need to be set free. You need to be set free of that dastardly thing. Because that's nothing but the enemy coming down and trying to destroy your life. We need to know his tactics. Know that he works on lack of knowledge. The one per, the person that has the most problems says, well, I, I, just, I just don't believe in that stuff. I'm sorry what you don't believe in. Evidently, you haven't read the Word of God. There you go. Jesus talked about them all the time. And he delivered and he told us, heal the sick, cleanse the leper, raise the dead, and cast out devils. That's how many there were. You say, well, that was back there. No, maybe it's today. 2 Corinthians, it says, Lest Satan should take advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. He's very clever. He's not stupid. You may think he's under your feet, but he's got a thousand demons that are constantly moving around in the world. And we're covered by the blood. Amen. The enemy we face is not vibes, bad vibes. It's not negative energies. It's not the dark side of the force. They are personalities who think, talk, listen, observe, and plan strategies against you and I. And there's some right as I'm sitting here, as I'm standing here and you're sitting there now. There are, there are demons that are, right now, they're working on a strategy how they can get to you. And the one thing they can't get through is the blood of Jesus. Amen. That blood of Jesus protects you. This is why you need to claim the blood of Jesus. Every morning, you need to claim the blood of Jesus. Say, Father God, by faith, I take the blood and I apply it to myself right now, all over myself. And go through the act actually of touching yourself, touching your checkbook, touching your home, touching your car. Because the blood of Jesus, they cannot penetrate it. In fact, the blood of Jesus, they hate it. When we're overseas and going through uh, exorcisms over there, it's the blood of Jesus who sets them free. It's not how loud, loud you yell and all the things they do, and we do it. But it's not, that's not it. It's the blood of Jesus. It's the power Praise of the Word God. of God. Amen. In fact, the first words of this foursome we're talking about is principalities. I get kind of interested in that, and I, I follow through that Greek word. You know what it means? It means a territory or a jurisdiction ruled by a despot. A despot is somebody like Stalin. Saddam Hussein, mm -hmm. Paul Pot, or the guy that was in front of, in Vietnam or somewhere where he was, uh, Stalin, those, those people who, who Mussolini and, and some of the ones today, they, they have no they have no passion for anybody. They don't care about anybody. Anybody. They, they, they have they have. There's you can't reason with them. They're the supreme authority, and those are the 